an important question, and it's good that it will be addressed to Daniele Scalia, because Italy now is one of those countries voicing their concern and, and, and rising strong voice on family issues as well. And sovereignty is also a safeguarding factor against international utopian projects that were mentioned in the third panel. Uh, and some of them are promoted by, by supernatural bodies as European Union. Uh, what is the strength of sovereignty in this context? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to add my voices, voice to those congratulating with you because Ordo Juris is doing really a terrific job in uh, monitoring the European Union. Your reports are always uh, very useful also for us, for fintankers in other countries of Europe. Uh, you spare us a lot of work. Uh, frequently we do not our research, just to go to uh, see what you wrote. So, um, coming to your question, well, naturally shifting the decision making from the uh, national level to the supranational level is enabling the pursuit of ideologically driven uh, utopia, as the one you mentioned. Uh, clearly, because uh, at the national level you have. Uh, um, be better control by the citizens. So what is the average citizen, the average man or woman asking to his politicians, to the politicians, just to get care of my interest, uh, do my best practical interest? Very seldomly they ask asking for, uh, you know, ideological crusades or something like that. Instead, on the European Union level, the scrutiny is very uh, lower. Uh, they have free reign on their ideological agenda. Uh, what one clearly realized and perceived in reading your last report uh, is that the EU establishment, after that the constitution was rejected by the peoples of Europe, have just decided to go on with forming a government, forming a, a European government, leaving aside a constitution. So we are going towards a government without a constitution. Something it's, sound, sounds wrong, something in that. Um, history, that is always the best teacher, has taught us that when you have a government that can unrestrainingly pursuing their ideological agenda Usually, that's not very good. Uh, we can think of uh, Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia. I guess that you in Poland have some clues on that. So, um, someone could object that uh, the EU elite is not, uh, you know, it's not a Nazi, it's not a Soviet. Well, okay, uh, let's consider also what are the deeply, um, the, the deeper roots of the work ideology that is now preeminent uh, in the European Union is clearly Marxism, as many have mentioned before. Uh, you can see what is happening, for example, in Poland, in, in a, in a, in a, towards the opposition. And uh, you can see how in Germany is treated the right-wing opposition by uh, you know, not just government, but in general, all the security apparatus. If we enlarge the site also outside the European Union, we have seen a uh, breakdown in, uh, in, uh, in Britain, we've seen what's happening in, uh, in Brazil, what's happening in the United States, with a double attempt to the life of the, the, the opposition candidate. So it seems to me that we are witnessing a sort of authoritarian turn. And so if it has ever been wise to give unrestrained power to, to your ruler, for sure this is not the best moment to do it. What kind of utopia would most probably pursuing a, a European Union government well, uh, more generally speaking, uh, we could think of globalism, that is, try to create just one big uh, world government. That means both um, enlarge the cleavage between the citizens and the rulers, so less democracy, 
And also it means that they are going to uh, rule with not in mind the best interest of the European citizens, but what they perceive as the best interest of all the world population, that in reality is just the best interest of the global elite. Um, but in a shorter time span, I expect that if, the, uh, if Trump is going to win in November in the United States, we will see an attempt to distance the European Union from the United States. We have seen something also during the first term of Trump with the EU establishment uh, some way flirting with China and not, not only China. They, they become very vocal critics of uh, the, 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 the real alliance, the real concept of alliance, strategic alliance with the United States. So, if they are going to uh, split Europe from the United States, this means that also countries, like all the Eastern European countries that perceive themselves as uh, threatened by uh, Russia, and that so they really uh, value the shield by the United States, are going to uh, be obliged to, 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 to have these, uh, these, these relations uh, cut. It is definitely true also for the southern flank. We do not have, as Italy, for example, a big uh, threatening power on the southern flank, but there are a lot of, uh, of threats there from the Islamists, uh, some uh, countries that are not clearly uh, trustworthy, Iran, and so on. Also for us, it's good to have uh, this type of support by the United States. If we are going to trust for, these, for, for, for um, our interest in the Mediterranean, other countries, namely France or Germany, it wouldn't be the same. In Italy, we still remember very well what happened uh, a dozen years ago in 2011, when, Libya, when Italy used to have a, a strategic cooperation with Libya that was important not only for business, not only for strategic um, supply of oil and gas, but also because Libya was cooperating in getting illegal migrants out of our shores. At that time, uh, other European countries, like France, Sarkozy is France, uh, seeing Libya most probably the opportunity to, to enlarge the sphere of influence at cost at expense of Italy, and they uh, push NATO to, to attack Gaddafi to support the Islamist rebels. What we actually have obtained is that Libya collapsed as a state, that hundreds of thousands of illegals reach our shores. So that's why we do not really trust some other European, not, I wouldn't say countries, because government, not just countries, because if, uh, you know, in France is going to change the, the government, uh, uh, then we can trust them, but not, uh, not in the current situation. The last thing I would like to say, uh, since we are speaking of migration, foreign uh, policy is very important also on uh, migration issues, especially for Italy, since we have lost almost every legal tools that we used to enjoy. Uh, you know, Italy used to uh, just push back, push back the boats of migrants. Uh, you intercept the boats and just send them back from the from where they, 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 they come from, that was uh, ruled as, as illegal by the European Court for the Human Rights uh, uh, in 2012. We have a lot of criticism by the European Commission and, other, and the European Union in general, the European Union Parliament, uh, with our methods uh, in tackling with these uh, NGOs, ships uh, that are bringing illegals on our shores. So one of the few, tool, few tools that is still in Italy's hands is foreign policy. Meloni used, used for, is using the foreign policy in this way. She has made agreement uh, with Tunisia, with Libya, with both governments in Libya, with Egypt, that are instrumental in uh, 
carbon in a more or less a half the arrivals uh, during this year in comparison with the last year. So if the foreign affairs are just going to become you know, the com ex exclusive competence of the European Union government, clearly hegemonized by Germany and France, uh, maybe the leftist government, Spain, uh, uh, that's definitely not good for us also in uh, uh, relation with migrations. 